a lot of mistakes and just kind of getting a gauge of like, you know, what mistakes are standing out to you guys and where your level is through that. Um, let me just readjust my laptop is big, but not that big. Um, so I'm white here and I'm playing some random boy named Kevin back in the old days. I don't have his last name anymore. <laughs> um, so this is, oh, it's not letting me move. One second. Um, so just let me move. Okay, there we go. Um, so this move was just went with E4, E5. Um, have you guys talked about or thought about kind of or heard about even the different stages of a chess game? No. Kind of from Eleni and Surya said yes. Um, do you want to tell the other two like what these stages are? Well, I I just um listen to the video Miss Elia sent. That's why I thought have a little bit of an idea. It's like mm -hmm. there's an opening and then there's a middle game and there's an end game. Mm -hmm. the opening is when you get all your pieces out. Middle game is like when like the ocean or something where like, that's what the dude said, where like you, <laughs> you might make like, that's when you lose a lot of pieces and things like that. And then the end game is when you like are trying to win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say, um, a lot of times you also win in the middle game. It doesn't have to be all the way in the end game for you to win. And there are opening traps as well that cause you know, us player to get checkmated out straight out of the opening. But yeah, those are definitely the three kind of main components of a chess game that we like to think of. So the opening is usually the first 10 to 15 moves of a game, typically. Um, there are some opening theories that are much longer, but I would say that's generally how I like to think of it. And um, the three principles in an opening are you want to be controlling the center, you want to be developing your pieces, and you want to castle. So kind of with e4, the reason this is, you know, to this day still my favorite kind of opening move is it's immediately controlling the center, and we're kind of having that strong center control. So my opponent moved e5 here. Can you guys think of why he decided to move there? It's the same reason as you did, like it's opening up the queen and the bishop and stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, so it's helping counter my pawn over here in e4 and getting good control of the center. So not an opening I would recommend today, but I used to play the king's gambit. So this is called a king's gambit because I'm pushing my king's pawn and I'm gambiting this pawn, right? Because if my opponent were to take the pawn, I have no way of taking it back. Um, this is just a very, I'm a, I'm a very tactical, aggressive player, just for some context of how I play in general. Um, so my opponent went f5 to kind of counter that. Um, and my I proceeded to go e takes f5. My opponent went e4, trying to maintain control of the center. I went knight e2. Can anyone think of why I might have gone knight e2? It defends that one pawn there. Right. So that's important. And also a small kind of trick that often happens whenever you see the F pawns outside misplaced. So for example, my F2 pawn has moved up to F4. My opponent's F7 pawn I already took on F5 is the idea of a check like queen takes H, queen to H4, right? So the reason that this knight move is important is that I'm protecting this pawn and I'm helping create the idea that now I can kind of push g3 and move my bishop out and I have kind of a stable position versus otherwise it kind of creates the queen h4 kind of takes advantage of the opening and weaknesses in my position. Um, so my opponent instead went knight f6, just developing their pieces. I went knight e c3, they went d5. Do you guys have, sorry, I realize I may be jumping ahead a little bit here. Do you guys have experience with notation or am I just saying a lot of random things? 
Well, I think it's kind of a, a little bit um, just like uh, coordinates, right? You have mm -hmm. the numbers mm -hmm. and the letters, right? Um, yeah. But is it anything else besides that? No, right? How do you distinguish the black from the white? Uh, you just, it's, it's, it, you don't really, you just know whose right. move it is. And then right. based on that, you it's say what it is. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. I ask you, what's the white bar on the left side? It's giving you, what information is it giving you? Uh, so that is the engine technically um, on chess.com. Whenever you're analyzing a position, it automatically has the engine placed. So usually basically how much of the bar is one color is how much of the position that person has an advantage, right? So because it's negative 0 0.53 right now, black is at a very, very slight advantage. I think that's largely because black has really good control of the center and you know my pieces are a little bit awkward. I will say though, I think in the beginning, it doesn't really make sense to use the engine or take too much, take what the engine is saying too strongly because we don't think like a computer ultimately. Right. And it can change any time, I presume. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, see that it's yeah. also, it's also over here, right? Right here, I see it, right? Right here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are these are engine lines cool. that, that the computer is showing. Yeah, so chess.com is actually, um, I find really resourceful. Uh, one negative of having a MacBook is also there's a chess database that I used growing up that isn't available on Macs. It's only available on PCs. Uh. Yeah, and it's called so it's called Chess Space. Um, I don't think for you guys it, it costs a lot of money to buy, so it probably doesn't make sense to purchase that software. Yeah. Um, but Chess.com provides a lot of the analysis that you would need for it where it shows you kind of the options in terms of what the engine is suggesting to move. And then you can go into the opening database. Yeah, this is not a popular cool. line. This is, this, is, uh, this is what happens when you put two people who just learned how to play against each other and there is no opening theory. <laughs> so, but typically if you're playing something more mainline, the openings tab is a really good resource to kind of learn through them. I think if you guys have time, I know at school is priority number one, but if you guys have time in your free time and want to poke around a little bit, I definitely think the chess.com website has a lot of resources um, that, that are pretty helpful. I, I am not, I'm not a hundred percent sure if how much of this is available on the basic membership. I will caveat that because um, I have a premium one, just my dad teaches on the side and he got me one. Um, I think Miss Elliot mentioned this, but Lee Chess is also a really great resource that's entirely free. Um, and they do also have kind of a learning area that I'm not as familiar with just because I've used chess.com since like 2015, 2016. So I'm much more familiar with that website, but it also has a lot of kind of basic puzzles you can do to help you improve your chess. And um, kind of there's something called a study where you can look at different analyses that other people have put together that you can walk through yourself. It's really kind of a public forum for chess players. Um, that looks good. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so these are the two main kind of, I think online chess platforms that you can play and learn from that I would recommend. Um, I'm just choosing to use chess.com because I'm more familiar with the interface and how it works as a whole. Um, but yeah, so my opponent went d5. And also feel free to ask me any questions whenever. Um, don't be afraid to interrupt me. I sometimes, I think a habit from streaming is I drone on a little bit. So definitely just like, let me know if you have any questions. Um, so after d5, I went d4, continuing to challenge the center. Um, have you guys heard of en passant before? What is it again? En passant? No, I, I have not. OK, so Surya has. So the idea is that you know, white, uh, well, both colors, pawns can move two squares on their first move, right, when they're moving from their original position. So in a way, they are passing through the middle square. So whenever there's an opponent's pawn kind of next to your pawn and you skip through that square where they could have taken your pawn, they can still take it. Oh, Jesus. They can still take the pawn because 
technically your pawn had to pass through that position, that square. So that's called an en passant because I think oh. in French it means like in passing and mm -hmm. your like pawn was in passing hanging. And so therefore, you know, your opponent can take it. Um, I didn't my opponent know did that. not. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not honestly, um, it's just like, for me at least at this point it's more like a legality thing of like i don't want you to be surprised if this shows up mm -hmm. but it doesn't it's not like the most common thing in the world to happen it's mm -hmm. like just because en passant is an option for you doesn't mean it's the best move right sometimes you don't want to exchange that pawn as black which is what my opponent chose to do here mm -hmm. um and i think that's sometimes it's there, there's a give and take in terms of when teaching whether or not you should bring up en passant because sometimes people are like now I know what en passant is every time I can't en passant I must en passant but sometimes that's not the right thing to do yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so after d4 my opponent decided to move knight c6 just developing their pieces um, should be five to pin their piece and um, should be four I castled they took my pawn that's been hanging there forever. Um, and then I went a3, right? Trying to kick out this bishop from the position. Can any of you think about why a3 might not have been the best move here? If you think about it in the context of like, sure, sorry, yeah, yeah. They can take your knight. Mm hmm. Yeah, so they can take my knight here in this position. My knight is available. Um, I think one other thing is if you're thinking about it in the context of what I said earlier, right? When you're in an opening, we're a little bit past the opening right now, but um, because I'm castled and most of our pieces are out, but what can you guys remind me what the three pillars of an opening are and what our goals are in the opening? Um, developing your pieces, taking control of the center and something mm -hmm. else. So the last thing was castling, right? Just tucking your king away and making sure your king is safe. So if you think about those principles, which one am I lacking here? Developing the center. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I have okay control of the center, right? I have this e4 pawn and I have this f4 pawn. So it's not the most conventional control of the center, but I am, I have, I have a stake in the center, right? Yeah. What else do you guys see? I don't know. I feel that the 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 black pieces are getting too close to the or to the king, to the you know the the other side, the opponent side, the queen. Mm -hmm. Especially, the, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, to an extent, I'm it's, it's too, less it's too aggressive that... for my liking. I would like to keep that, <laughs> I would like to keep that bishop away from there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, with that, actually, a3, a3 is a good move, right? So, I'm kicking the bishop away. I'm forcing them to either commit and take my knight, which I can just take right. back, right? And mm -hmm. I still have good control of the center. Or, as my opponent chooses to do, they decide to move their bishop back. So the reason I just wanted to bring this up is um, in terms of those three principles, something that stands out to me when I'm looking back at this game now is, you know, yes, it's nice for me to kick this bishop out of the way, but I have pieces that are completely undeveloped right now that are doing nothing, right? So maybe instead of moving a3, what I could have done is try to develop my bishop over here, or maybe try to kind of finagle my knight into a different position, because these, these two pieces are ultimately the pieces that are doing nothing right now in this position. Um, but I think a3 is still the fine move for um, for this position. Yeah, so my bishop, opponent moved their mm -hmm. bishop back, right? They don't want to trade their bishop for this knight. And then I moved bishop e3, finally developing this bishop. What do you guys, just like kind of intuitively, what are your first thoughts when you're looking at this bishop? I have a yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Wait, can, pawns can like move forward, right? I mean, like, wait, they do they, they just move one one square forward? Mm -hmm. Couldn't they just like take your bishop? Right. So pawns move forward, yeah. but pawns take 
at a one square diagonal. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why like this pawn is protected by this one. So that's kind of black support structure. Versus, and that's why like these two pawns, sorry, I just want to unhighlight stuff so I'm not too yeah. confusing. So that's why these two pawns can't take each other. Oh, okay, got you. But the bishop is kind of a, uh, there is like really not doing anything. Away. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, it cannot go anywhere from there. It's a back, back to the place where it was. Or the one, uh, what is that? Um, I have such a hard time with the notation, uh, D, E, F, <laughs> F2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. it's kind of, um, it's not the, I mean, did it gain, did you gain anything by doing that? So I think what I gained was, it helps me put, eventually take out this rook, right? I need to get the rid of the knight and the bishop from B1 and C1 to eventually develop my rook. Mm -hmm. But I do agree, like this bishop doesn't really have a future. It's it's just a really fat, fancy looking pawn right now, right? It protects my two pawns yeah. and it sits there and it blocks this pawn from moving forward. And otherwise the bishop isn't really doing anything. Um, but ultimately I think it's, it is important that I am developing my piece. Sometimes it's important to develop your pieces, even if it's not the prettiest square in the world. Um, so after bishop b3, my opponent went knight g4. Right, so my bishop is in hanging danger. here. <laughs> yes, very much in danger. And I went bishop f2 to keep it protected. Mm -hmm. My opponent went e3, very aggressive. So why can't I take the pawn back? The knight. Mm -hmm. Right, so the knight's protecting the pawn right now. Mm -hmm. And so I can't take it back. And instead, I move my bishop up to g3. Right. So mm -hmm. it's still not the prettiest square for the bishop, but it's, it's a square. Um, Could you have moved all the way to h4? And then you over are, here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you would, uh, you would be kind of, I don't know, uh, the king has to move now. No, that's the queen. Oh, that's the queen. Forget it. Well, I don't know. Right, so the queen can take yeah. my bishop, right? Because yeah. my bishop's not protected on that square. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So after bishop g3, my opponent went a6. They're like tired of this pin going on here. They're like, we want none of it. I want to move my pieces. So I move my bishop back. They move b5, continuing to attack my bishop. Move my bishop back to b3. And my opponent took this pawn on d4. So what are your first reactions to this move? Sure. Yeah, so yeah. Um, to capture knight with queen. Mm -hmm. All right, so my opponent's hanging their knight here. Mm -hmm. Sally, I can see you don't you don't look very convinced. Yeah. Um, so my opponent kind of decided that they wanted this pawn um, and they were willing to give up their knight for it. So young Alice did not take the knight. Can you guys guess what I did instead? Uh, you move forward to c2 with the knight. C did you do that? No. <laughs> well, I can't, right? How how would I move my my move forward? Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking the other way around. Sorry. Um, you moved your bishop back to a two. So right idea. I think I was scared that they were going to take my bishop, and so rather than moving it back, though, you took the, think, the pawn. Oh, you took the pawn. Yeah, yeah. I took the pawn. Yeah. I'm I'm a very aggressive player. Yeah. Um, more of my recent games, like I will randomly sacrifice pieces for fun. I do not recommend for a while <laughs> to do that. <laughs> and so with bishop takes d5, you know, this knight is still hanging, but my opponent has this kind of interest thing. They decide to go yeah. e2, kind of pushing their pawn for, mm -hmm. forward more. What are your first That's thoughts? That. <laughs> for me or for my opponent? For you. For me, why is it bad for me? Well, because uh, you're gonna lose something. You, I presume you're gonna protect the, the queen. And if you protect the queen, you're gonna lose the, 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 the tower, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is a fork on my rook. Yeah, on the rook, right? yeah. <laughs> on my rook and my queen. Yes. Um, so. Although you could, 
use your night? How? Um, take the, what is that, C3? You can actually mm -hmm. go to the, get the pawn out of there. Of course, you you will be attacked. You could attack with the knight, uh, the knight, but you have the queen right there. So I don't think you will dare do that. Right. So this position, this move looks really intimidating. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I can just take the free pawn. Mm -hmm. Right. So ultimately, what happens here, though, is when I take this knight, this is I don't expect you guys to see all of this. It's just kind of the beauty of chess that I want to display. There's a lot of things going on here. This knight's hanging, right? This knight can also take my knight. My knight's not hanging because my queen is protecting it, but it's still under attack. Because I took the pawn, my bishop is now hanging because I removed that defender of that bishop. And also my opponent is threatening potentially moving their knight here, which is another fork on my queen and my rook. And on top of all of that, my c2 pawn is hanging. So there's just a lot of things going on in this position. It's kind of chaotic. Um, and I think ultimately what happens is I don't have enough tempos here for me to be able to kind of take advantage of the fact that I was able to take this pawn. So rather than going into all of these complications, I decided that, um, can you guys think of another way for me to uh, kind of, rather than, instead of taking the pawn, another way for me to, to make it so that my opponent isn't able to take either my queen or my rook? Um, yes. Um, put them in check, or somehow, because then they have to focus again? on put put them in check, the king in check somehow, because then they have to focus on that. I don't know how mm -hmm. you do that. I haven't thought that far. With the bishop, the bishop. <laughs> that um maybe, but then oh, no, that's the queen. I think it back. It. Yeah. So I like that. That was that was your first thought. That's definitely uh, like in terms of how you classify different moves in chess, there's forcing moves like checks or captures, that kind of thing. There's attacking moves that are threatening something. And then there are just like peace improving moves. Some, I mean, sometimes there, I mean, there's also moves that are just like bad, mm -hmm. but in general, those are the three categories of moves that happen, right? So when you're looking at a position like this, you do wanna think about it in that order of what forcing moves do I have to have here? That includes checks and captures. If I'd thought about it that way, I probably would have taken the pawn on e2, right? Unfortunately, I think white has three checks on the board right now, right? Can can one of you try to name all three of them? Wait, what did you say? Three checks, so, did you say? White has three possible ways to check the black king. Oh. oh. Um, with the bishop. Mm -hmm. So where, where can the bishop go? It can go to F7. Right, so that's one of them. Mm -hmm. That's a check. What else is a check? Um, hold on. Moving the queen to capture the pawn, but that's like not a good move, so. Right, so this is also technically check, mm -hmm. right? And then what else? There's one more on this position. There's one more. Uh, yes, you can move the bishop to uh, c6. Mm -hmm. Right, so those are the three checks. Mm -hmm. As you can probably tell from the bar moving down right. very drastically, every one of these moves is losing a piece Pretty at bad. least, right? <laughs> so this one loses a bishop. Yeah. This one also loses a bishop because the king can immediately take it. And this one is dropping my queen. Yeah. So it's not a good trade. <laughs> So we you know in this nothing. position, yeah. right, right. So we know in this position, checks are not the way to go, right? So wait, Any are you saying mm -hmm. that there is a move that we you can save um, the queen and the rook? Mm -hmm. What? Right, so we know now that it's not a check, right? All of the checks, I just I should just resign next move if I try to check oh. them. So moving beyond the checks, we want to think right. about captures, Yeah. right? Can you just so, capture it with the knight? Right, so that's one option. Okay. But here, it's not a capture, 
but there's another move that I have that can okay. help me keep both my queen and my rook. Huh. I saw you unmute, Izzy. Can you <laughs> can you move the rook forward? I'm literally just guessing stuff. Rook rook forward where? To like. <laughs> I don't even know. Like to two. To F2. Rook here. Yeah. Yeah, but you're leaving the queen. It's totally right. exposed. Like, I, I would take it. Be taken, right? I would take that queen without. Wait, uh, isn't that there? a king? No. <laughs> That's a I king. Well, oh, if it was a king, problem. I would be in check. <laughs> Yes. The king is always the one with the cross on top yeah. of his head. Oh. Um, but yeah. So unfortunately, that doesn't work. I will say, so I'll give you guys, I, I guess I'll just, I'll reveal it, but kind of beforehand, I know I mentioned the term earlier, but are you guys familiar with the term of a pin? Okay. Eleni, do you want to try to explain it? Oh, so I'm sorry. Is that how you pronounce your name? I'm really bad with names. Uh, Eleni. Uh, Eleni, okay. Is it like when, I don't know how exactly to say it, but it's on like the other person's king and you, there's like one of their pieces that's like somehow in, in front of it. That's like um, when you put your piece into place, your you have uh, that person can't move their piece without exposing their king to check. Yeah, Surya, do you have anything else to add? I think I might know what it is. Can I guess or? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Is it like moving either queen or rook to um, e one? You're right. So a pin is essentially um, it can be against the queen uh, a king or it can be against any piece that's valued higher than the piece in front of it, right? So in this case, the pawn here is pinned against the king, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the pawn were to move, in this case, it's illegal, right? Because then the king would be hanging. But let's say instead of a king, it was in front of a queen. If the pawn were to move, I would be able to capture the queen. So the idea of a pin is that a higher valued piece or entity is being blocked by a lower valued one and that lower valued one is unable to move because of a move that you made where because of one of your pieces, right? So in this position, my rook is pinning the pawn against the king. So the pawn cannot take my queen because if they were to take it, it would be, it, it would be an illegal move because the king is open. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. so you can't do it like in chess. Why, why can't you like capture it? Right, so in chess, the ultimate goal is to checkmate or to kind of capture your opponent's king, right? So you can't hang or give up your king because then the game is over. So if black were to try and take my queen, I would be able to take their king, which would mean that the game is over. So that's not something that in legally in, in the game that black is allowed to do. Does that make sense? They're not like allowed to lose. Kind of. <laughs> so like, so, so the tricky part of my answer here is that technically black can resign whenever black wants and that's equivalent to losing. But um, <laughs> just in terms of the actual game, right? Like you're not allowed to have your king be captured. That's why checkmate ends the game. Right? Oh, okay. Because when you checkmate your opponent, the king can't move anywhere without being captured, which is why the game is over. Okay. Right? So you're not allowed to have your king be captured because that's kind of admitting defeat in a way. Okay. So legally, black is unable to take the queen. So wait, it's an illegal move? It's totally mm -hmm. illegal. Okay. I thought it was yeah, just so, kind of stupid, but I didn't realize that it was illegal. <laughs> it's, it's illegal. That's why, like, the software won't even let me take it. Oh, right? okay. So if you're playing in person to an extent, like, you can move it because yeah. and then your you opponent like doesn't go like, <laughs> your opponent doesn't go like, hey, you're in check. Like, no yeah. one's stopping you. 
-hmm. but it's technically an illegal move in that you're not supposed to. Um, so like something that's actually um, small anecdote, small, small analogy here, not analogy, anecdote. Um, but a lot of times when people are playing speed chess in person, they won't realize they're in check and their opponent will take their king and that's immediate, you're, you're done, you lost, right? So you never wanna leave your king hanging. So sometimes in person speed chess, people will take advantage of that and they'll do like a sneaky pin or something like that and you won't notice and then they'll take your king. But kind of in, in all seriousness, you're not supposed to allow your king to be captured. Yeah. But wait a second. So uh, because you made an illegal move when you have a mate, a check, then the opponent can win? Is that what you're saying? And the speed, a speed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chess. So basically, so because so in speed chess, um, mm -hmm. even if you play like a regular tournament, um, so tournaments are typically, it sounds very daunting. Each game is probably like four to six hours once you're kind of playing competitively regularly. Mm -hmm. There is definitely more kind of amateur level where each game is probably shorter. There's rapid games as well. And I think the chess world as a whole is also moving towards shorter time controls because they realize people aren't really interested in watching two people sit in front of a board for seven hours. Um, <laughs> but um, so if you play an illegal move like walking into check or allowing, we're kind of, if Black were to take the pawn here in, a, in kind of over the board position, Black would be docked time on the clock. You would lose up half your time up to, I believe it's 20 minutes, mm. is how you're punished if you play an illegal move over the board. So the reason in Blitz that you just forfeit is like you have so little time because you're starting with three or five minutes that like it doesn't make sense to dock your time, like you just lose. So that's kind of how that works. Yeah. But yeah, so the nice part about chess.com and playing online is that you're prevented from playing any illegal moves. I very oftentimes in Blitz will try to like, if I were black here, there's probably, I would probably first try to take the queen and then be like, why can't I take the queen? And be like, aha, my pawn is pinned. That's right. right. So this is kind of how I'm able to both, you know, protect my rook and also prevent my queen from being taken this move. So my opponent went queen e7, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of in a way, um, ending the pen. There is still a pen to the queen, but in this case, black would be taking my queen, which if they promote to a queen, why can't I take their queen? So I guess I, I can just move it here. Uh, let's say I move something dumb like this. Uh, why can't I take their queen in this position? Oh, the king. Hey, Surya? Oops, sorry. <laughs> no yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Like, so then you're going to go and check. You're going to put yourself right. in the news. Right. So my rook is pinned now by their queen. So I can't take that queen. So, I mean, not that it really matters. I'd probably still end up taking this queen. Either way, right, in this position, I would be trading a queen for a pawn because even if they took and I was able to take this queen, they had just queened another queen, right? So then they black still has another queen on the board. So after my opponent went queen e7, I went queen d2, preventing my queen from being taken. I really just like can't be bothered to take this knight apparently. I just didn't want the free piece. Um, <laughs> so after queen, queen d2, my opponent went bishop b6, threatening to potentially check me in the future. I moved my king. Sorry, I'm losing my place in notation a little bit. Okay, so I moved my king over, and my opponent went check. Mm -hmm. Okay, see what's wrong with this move. Mm -hmm. Realizing I should just uncheck this so you guys can't, can't just read what the computer says to me. Mm -hmm. Well, the bishop is right there, isn't it? Were you asking what's wrong with the move, right? Yeah. So you have a bishop that will definitely can take that piece and it will be protected too. Nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Also, you can move the it's, king. I can't. Right. So yeah. the main thing here is the knight's not yeah. protected. I can just right. take it. I would just take it, yeah. And it's just a free piece here. So Alice finally learns how to take free pieces halfway through the game. 
Uh, yeah. My opponent decides that they want to move their knight here. Mm -hmm. They're trying to fork my queen and my rook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have a pawn right there. Right. So I immediately just take the free knight. Right. So my opponent is kind of, I think they're thinking this is a trade, right? They can now, my bishop is now hanging. So they take the bishop. Using kind of what we talked before about pins, can you guys guess what my best next move is? Yes, Surya? Well, I don't know if this is a uh, um, pin, but you can also get their rook. So maybe you want to do that soon. Mm -hmm. All right, know. so their rook is hanging. Yeah, that's not a pin though. I just wanted to say yeah. that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. don't you want to protect your rook first? Yeah, 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 of course. But then later, like soon. So mm -hmm. you're saying that there is a way to pin the, to create the pin in there? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Protecting what the 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 rook right no wait what's the the piece right now that is ready to be in jeopardy is the rook on what is that e1, e1. yeah so, so my you're trying rook to is protect hanging. that yeah yes sir yeah? wait okay i think i think this is dumb actually now that i'm thinking about it no it's not Oh, wait, wait. Yes, move the rook to um, mm -hmm. e2. Yes. Right. So kind of with the same idea as before, right? When I capture this pawn on e2, yeah. I'm creating a pin of the right. queen against the king, which means I'm going to win the queen. Mm -hmm. Right? The only reason that this is better than potentially taking the rook on a8 is a my rook on e1 was also hanging. And also, ultimately, the queen is worth more than a rook. So I'm, I want to take that rook off of the board. Um, so I was not that intelligent. I actually did take this rook. Um, <laughs> my opponent, though, decided that they didn't want to take my rook. Oh. Um, and they instead moved queen here. I think they wanted to take um. the rook without allowing me to take back with the queen. Mm -hmm. So kind of trying to double attack on the rook. Um, and so here I went rookie two check at this point i realized the pawn is hanging my opponent went king f7 this bishop is hanging now right because i have two attackers and my opponent has one defender so i do rook takes f7 i uh, rook takes f2 my opponent went rook to e8 uh, i moved i lost my place again i'm sorry i moved queen d5 check my opponent went bishop here to block it I went queen d4 to protect my rook because this queen is still targeting mm -hmm. it. They went rook takes a8. At this point, though, I am up a knight and a rook, so I'm kind of like, you know, whatever about that bishop over there. Mm -hmm. um, so they took on a8. I finally developed this knight after 26 moves. Mm -hmm. Opponent went b4. I just took the free pawn. They went rook c8. I went rook g1. They went c5. I took the free pawn. They went rook c7. I went queen g7 check. They moved here. I took the rook here. My opponent took my rook here. I went f5. My opponent took. And then can you guys spot the checkmate here? Yeah, no, hold on. <laughs> Great, so yeah, let's try to give everyone else a little more time too. Okay, yeah, I, I can wait. Um, do you just move your rook on g1 uh, to g8? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is kind of a, what we like to call a ladder checkmate of sorts. Right, where my queen is blocking all of the squares that the king wants to go to on this file. 
and then the rook is able to control these, right? And now the queen, this is checkmate because anywhere that the king wants to move, yeah. it can be captured, right? So the game is now over. Great. Pretty good. Yeah. Did you say this, Any is, questions? this was your first game? What did you say about this? Game? No, it was it was a game from when I was much younger. So yeah. this was from 2006. So I was eight. Oh, gee. I was I was a child. Um, yes, but yeah, were. this was just like a chess camp that I went to. Uh -huh. Um, I was I was very much a nerd. <laughs> All I did with my summers in elementary school was go to chess camps. Well, that sounds great. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it was it was a really good time. I will mm -hmm. say, like, I look back at pictures that my dad has of those days, and I'm almost always the only girl, which is crazy to think about. Um, but like when I joined chess club in second grade, it was like 50 50 girls versus boys. Wow. So I don't really know. Like, that's like one thing that's really hard. And like the, the US chess women's committee is trying to understand how to improve is retention. Because a lot of girls kind of just drop off in middle school or so, mm -hmm. or like late elementary school. But that's definitely something that they want to they wanna try to be better about. Yes, that would be so, re so really good that if we can yeah. change a little bit the, the culture behind yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, actually, another.